Welcome everyone to the Art Network Podcast, the ninth episode. Hope everyone's been enjoying what we've been doing, uh, meeting a lot of really good artists and getting to know them. Today I'm here with Luis Valle. We've had a, a pretty fun day. He invited me to his studio in Little Haiti and it's been, uh, it's been fun. We flew the drone. I saw you in action a little bit. We've been hanging out. So everyone listening knows uh, where you're located, like where some of your work is, some of your murals, how long you've been in the game. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, I grew up here in Miami. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, pretty much an artist as long as I've been remembering anything. Um, they really, you know, got into it. Uh, hardcore when I was like in high school, I started doing some graffiti, was really into my art in school. And uh, in college, uh, that's what I did as a... You went to major. school in New York? I went. I got my bachelor's in fine arts from Florida State, and then I got a master's degree in uh, NYU. So oh. now for art. Um, so yeah, I've been. I came back to Miami. You know, well, I worked in the art scene in a couple of art galleries before I went to New York. Then uh, I came back here and was you know involved in uh, in some of the art galleries here early on, uh, some of the Latino art galleries, and then some of the galleries in Wynwood, um, and then I opened up. Uh, couple galleries, uh, one in the design district and one in Wynwood that we closed about two and a half years ago. So, so your whole life you've been just working hard? Yeah, yeah, just that. I mean, I've had to do other things to sustain myself in the meantime, but I've always been an artist, you know, and doing stuff and involved in the arts and either always creating you know, pretty much my whole life in all kinds of ways. And, uh, yeah, it was- and I definitely know you, you're around because I, I have seen your work. I mean, I didn't do my homework before I came here. I didn't look at your work. I just, local artist, Haiti, boom, I'll be there Friday. So uh, I got here and I just happened to post one of your works that I was in Wynwood. I took a picture and uh, I posted it. I didn't know it was you, so that was cool. You have a few big murals. Uh, yeah, I have various uh, large murals all around town, really like all around, painted in other countries and other cities before, so, um, but all over Miami, they're spread out. You did some in Costa Rica, you were telling Yeah, me? yeah, I did in Costa Rica, in Haco, cool. yeah, so I had a few out there um, years ago, I did that. Um, so, Dominican Republic, I'm going to Cuba this summer, and Haiti, so, wow. there's some stuff out there as well. And this, this didn't just like happen overnight, like you didn't just say, hey, I'm going to become an artist and then just start painting huge murals. This is something you've been developing your skill and your craft for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, it's been a long time. It's not like I just came in and just like started, you know, going to Wynwood and painting walls (laughs) and whatever. I've been doing it for a long time, you know. I've been, you know, involved in all different kinds of uh, aspects of arts, working with kids, um, murals, canvas work, video art. Um, sculpture, um, metal sculpture, you know, ceramics, I've done all kinds of stuff and um, been involved in all kinds of different realms in the local scene here and, you know, so it's been a lot of work, definitely. And then this, uh, this style, this like series of work that you, you've created, this is something more like recent, right? Um, to- it's more, it's been developing for the last like 10 years, I'd say. Um, it, I was known for others, a different kind of style before that was more of a surrealistic kind of expressionistic style. Um, and I guess my work's always been some sort of surreal, like psychedelic, like um, otherworldly, but then this started to take on more like, um, how you say, indigenous, like using more indigenous elements. Yeah. Like uh, from many different cultures, so. So, from, I, is there specific like Aztec or Mayan? Like, there's, it's really a mix of everything, because what I've noticed is that like, you know, throughout the world there's um, shamanistic, shamanistic and indigenous cultures, uh, plant-based cultures all over the world. All over the world. All over the world. And when you look at their artwork, there's a lot of similarities in them, and a lot of patterns, a lot of dots, right? a lot of this, a lot of that. So, you start noticing that it's all interconnected, you know, and there's all, they're all going into similar worlds, similar realms, and they're seeing similar things. So I've just kind of like gotten a lot of uh, bits and pieces from um, all these different cultures and kind of like blended and made my own kind of language with it. 
and when you when you start one of these big paintings uh, do you have a name for it the the kind of a... it's funny because a lot of people have asked me what this painting's called and to be honest with you i haven't really thought about labeling it or labeled it um i have had some friends say like nuevo indigenous work or something like that there's there's always going to be wanting to put a label on it or to to you know or try and so you just describe it just, when when yeah like as a yeah, it's, de it's definitely spiritual, yeah. definitely influenced by indigenous cultures, definitely has some sort of like psychedelic or energetic kind of like elements to it. You know, these definitely have a lot of energy and vibration. And yeah, I like these, uh, uh, the figures that you put on them. I yeah, feel like I'm looking at like a pyramid. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like I said, it's a blend of stuff. So it's not necessarily something from one culture, it's like influenced from many different cultures. And when you do your big murals, uh, a lot of people who are listening are like artists, up and coming artists. They want to learn, they want to get to a level that you've gotten to. What kind of advice on actually painting a mural? Uh, you know, you, you have graffiti classes, you're, you love teaching about art also. So what kind of like few basic tips or advice, say someone does get like a, their first mural, right? What, what kind of few well, little tips? I guess the first thing is a lot of artists that have never done murals before are kind of intimidated by it. They don't know about how to go around doing it, I guess, which I guess for me has been kind of second nature already because I've been painting kind of big scale my whole life. Ever okay. since I was a teenager, I started doing, you know, big graffiti like pieces and whatnot. So do you mean painting um, more on like an outdoor surface or painting large? Like what Outdoor and large, even large, even large canvases too. Okay. So um, basically one of the best tips would probably be like you have to adjust your materials mm. and your tools so instead of using you know certain brushes and acrylic paints now you're using rollers and buckets and big it's brushes kind of and thinking spray outside of the box yeah yeah, yeah 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 you you're don't going, really think about that <laughs> yeah yeah you're going large with different materials now you're using latex paint spray paint you might use a sprayer you might you know to get things done faster you might you know, use things with spray paint to get certain things done, certain effects done. Um, so it's really, you gotta change your, your materials, number one. And then... You yeah, gotta, and I noticed that here, you're, this is this is a full shop. Yeah. And you're super organized. Yeah, I have a lot of stuff, so I gotta be organized. If not, it becomes a mess quick. Yeah. As I get busy and... and Buckets, blast. rolls of tape, like materials that you can do big, big scale projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have my ladders, got a lot of buckets, oh. a, lot of, a lot of extra paint. I even have a container that is in another part of town. Well, not part of town, it's close by. It's another lot where I store things that I don't want to necessarily have here, like, oh, ladder, really? like ladders, uh, frames, things that I don't need to have access to all the time. And then here I have like my paintings, my, you know, my, uh, my paint, all my painting supplies to create here and to do murals outside so I can just kind of like get up and go. Uh, you know, if I have a job tomorrow, I'll have all my lights, all my gear, a projector if I need it. Oh, so you can uh, work at so night? Yeah, I can work at night. Yeah, I have like big, big lights. I can have like a whole workforce set up, have uh, power out with me so I can have like extra power, have my, take my cameras out to time lapse. It's, it's like a whole setup, you know, that I do. So um, so a lot of times I have like people who come out and help me too because I have a lot of stuff with me. And, it's, it's and is it fun? Is, it, is there a different feeling when you're painting on like a, a, a canvas that you know someone will buy and put in their home compared to painting something outdoors where it's going to be seen and it's like part of like the actual physical world is there any difference yeah it's it's no there's for, for sure a difference i mean both of both of it it's it's um the work is always you know exciting to gratifying. do you know, it's gratifying it's always you want to do your best and do something that people are going to enjoy and like um but you know it's like for me the most actually gratifying thing that i've been able to do with my artwork is to do large-scale murals and public art projects because as an artist, you know, you really work hard to <laughs> uh, <laughs> to to do your work and uh, and uh, and get it out there. And you know, you can do these canvases and you do them over and over. And you've been doing it for a long time. I've been doing it for a long time. And then you have these art shows that maybe not a lot of people go to, or maybe not so many people got to see the work. And then when you do these large scale murals. You're doing them in a neighborhood or in an area maybe where thousands of cars are going to come by or people are going to see and it may really change the neighborhood and 
and mm. uh, and really make people you know have, you get like awesome responses when you're painting at the time so it's like really satisfying because it's like instant like gratification because you'll be painting on the wall people will come by mm. as you're painting they will bring you water they want to take pictures with you they'll like tell you how awesome it is and how happy they are that you're painting in their neighborhood so That's awesome. so you know it's like it's instant satis satisfaction because you know you know you're doing something that you love and like you know, people love and they end up enjoying so that aspect's pretty cool so yeah, you sure. mentioned you enjoyed doing it in underprivileged neighborhoods and places that aren't so like you know satisfying to like drive through for example and like you can put a beautiful yeah. piece of work and it might who knows it might change the whole vibe and yeah, I mean, those people usually, uh, some of the people that I appreciate the most sometimes because they're like in a neighborhood where, you know, they may not be able to get the, or have the best means and ways and things that other people have. And, to and see usually, art. Even. Yeah, usually like in hood neighborhoods or whatever, like I noticed that like everything's just kind of like run down and drab, even like gas stations or the local just fast food restaurant or whatever like it just seems to be like all the paint and like all these neighborhoods are just like run down mm -hmm. and rugged inside and all it takes is a little just facelift and, and turn around and you know to just like, kind of like change people's moods and and just like change the vibe of whatever i mean there's people capitalizing on this whole idea out there and i mean if, yeah, if i can help in a way not capitalize on thought they like help change the neighborhood and help change people's vibe off you know sometimes uh, you know, help them feel like, like you know, give, put a smile on somebody's face when they're going home. At least, you know, or you know, that feels good. You know, compared to necessarily just not doing, having just yeah, like or, a rundown side of the building and just yeah, yeah, some rundown side of the building or whatever, or just getting up for getting up sake because you know you're you're doing something and placing it in a place where people are gonna see it for our neighborhood and whatnot. So I kind of take that into consideration too. You know. Awesome. And you were here, you've been in South Florida for like ever, basically. Yeah, I grew up here. I mean, So you, you've you seen the development of Wynwood, right? Like yeah, yeah I've, seen, I've thing, seen Wynwood. Or just Miami in general. Yeah, Miami in general, I've grown up here, I've seen it go through many facelifts. You know, it's like, it kind of like almost changes completely every decade. Definitely like every five years it has some sort of you know, change of vibe. Yeah. You know, but um, definitely I've been around for the whole Winwood thing. I was, you know, was a, as a kid we'd go out there and bomb, you know. Yeah. Wood and, you know, our, the RC Cola factory and all that. And and I remember the first time I went to a gallery in Winwood or a show was probably like back in like 1998 or 1999, you know. And then the whole Big House art complex has been going on over there for a long time. And The same. Yeah, you know, the Big House car art complex has been out there forever. and. And um, but Wynwood, you know, I've seen it go through what it from what it was to being super, super just like underground, hood, um, really dangerous and desolate to a neighborhood to where it was really underground art and art galleries and artists were kind of coming through and building it up, and not even building up the neighborhood because it was just more that they were just kind of finding a spot to just kind of like do their thing and just like do it for cheap or not get you know mm. like raped in any part of town for rents or whatnot. Mm. So. So Winwood started kind of like getting ironic, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Winwood was like a thing that kind of you know the artists and galleries went there because it was cheap as hell, and it was like you get these huge warehouse spaces for for nothing, or awesome. or sometimes at, at, at the beginning like just, people people would only just give you the spaces just because they knew that there was nothing going on there and that you'd at least like do something there and clean it up a bit. And you can have showings. Yeah, you have parties. shows, and it was like super cool, you know, for a long time. And um, no, and even Winwoods, I've seen Winwood go through its stages. So you know, there was a time when I, I left Miami and I was in New York, but I'd come back and you know, and I'd kind of see what was going on in Winwood, and I'd chime in all the time whenever I'd be in Miami, and and so I saw that happen. And that's really what brought me back to Miami was Winwood. Yeah. So, yeah, because you saw the growth in the art. And yeah, the I saw the growth in the art, and and you know, growing up, you know, you. You know, the wet, like weather, or being home. Yeah, playing. all that too. I mean, I love Miami. I grew up in Miami. I'm a Miami boy. Like, you know, I love it down here. I always knew that the city was probably one of the best cities in the world, and just was just was young and just had a lot to you know had a lot of growing to do. Um, but um, you know, I went to New York with stars in my eyes. You know, got was going to go to NYU and all that. And, I got there two weeks before 9-11 happened, you know, and that kind of wow. like changed everything. Cause it so kinda, you were there? Yeah, it kind of changed the whole mood of, of, of New, New York, York, of starting yeah. there. I had some personal things in my life happen, personal family things that were just really tragic and just like, 
the whole, the whole beginning part of New York, like life in New York was really, really rough. And New York is a rough city to begin with and a rough city to when you're having personal stuff and when you're having something like 9-11 yeah. happening and just like all that at once. So it was a big... How long were you there then? I was in New York for about five, six years. Wow, that's so, a long time. Yeah, and you know, and I love New York. You know, I live in Brooklyn. I have, I, I love Brooklyn. Like, you know, so I was there for like the early parts of Williamsburg when, when Williamsburg was kind of like what Wynwood became. Okay. Or what so that's like was. a small na- like neighborhood in Brooklyn. Yeah, what's well, a neighborhood in, in Brooklyn that kind of was like what what happened to Wynwood? Just oh. kind of like a, the art neighborhood with artists. You know, it was kind of like uh, more avant garde. You know, like really hip neighborhood, and then. It got super gentrified and then mm. it just became like anything else, shops, yeah. restaurants, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's an interesting evolution. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's America, it's capitalism, it's what it's going to be. People want to squeeze out the most out of whatever situation they can with the most, the least amount of work so they can make the most amount of money off it, you know. It's, it's just kind of what... When would it's off of itself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the nature of the beast, I guess. It's what, I guess, how people are raised to think here. But Wynwood, you know, was an awesome neighborhood. And Williamsburg was awesome in New York to be part of, too. And Wynwood was awesome to be part of, to see, like, go through all these stages and transition. I mean, now it's, it's a lot different now. Um, but it, it had definitely helped for just the bloom of just it spreading out through all over Miami into different parts of the city. Because without all that, without Wynwood, you know, I don't think neighborhoods, like, um, Hialeah or Little Havana would have turned into kind of, you know, are the kind little of, pockets that they are now. Yeah, yeah, now there's pockets of Little Havana that are really hip and dope, you know, that um, has kind of like evolved to a different thing. You yeah, know, so, so it's interesting how like, that's kind of like a what, like a, expi- before like when would get so gentrified and like changes so much over time, it kind of like, branches out to other pockets yeah they definitely did what what happened was Winwood kind of blew up it blew up like years ago as far as for the artists and and like a lot of galleries like Mm. there's was it art basil well art basil's been here for for a long yeah it blew up because art basil but also blew up when people when the murals started kind of like getting in murals started really like like you know making drawing a lot of the attention because before People weren't really just going there for the art galleries to go walk around, you know. You really had to be in the art world or, you know, because it was like a true art walk where it was like people Real were Real street art. No, it wasn't really street art at first. It was it was more like the art galleries in Miami, what they were showing, a lot of conceptual galleries, a lot of Latino galleries, and they started growing. And then the locals were always doing their graffiti there, you know. Oh. And, but, but like what started happening was people started inviting um, big names from outside of Miami to come paint in Miami, and mostly Wynwood and Design District. And that started giving Wynwood like, international attention because mm-hmm. these guys were big street artists. And so they started painting with some of the big locals. And so that started giving attention to Wynwood worldwide as far as the neighborhood, and, and it started giving it- So it big, has an international- Yeah, thing. yeah, and they started making it a, na- a name for, for artists in the whole street art world that wanted to come paint and it's just like anything else it just kind of like opened up pandora's box and he just got out of control and it blew up but then it also blew up what was that like five ten years ago i would say like the peak golden year of winwood was probably like 2011 2012 when it was the epitome of the amount of quality artists from all over the world coming when there was the most amount of murals and and people were you know you'd ha- you'd see artists everywhere. Um, then after that, like less and less art international artists and big names started coming because it got oversaturated and murals started getting painted over and street wars started happening and the gentrification just got kind of gross. Wow. You know you already saw like the gentrification. You, the gentrification was already there like at 2011, but if the, uh, the international community didn't really see it. You so know? what? So, it, what would you? S- so with all of that, because to me. What, to someone who isn't a like such a experienced artist and has done so much, to me, Winwood is still everything that you're talking about. But when you're an actual like artist and you know so much about the art world, what is it now to you compared to what it was in 2011 and 2000? Like, what do you see in now? Well, the way that I like to describe it is kind of like I remember I had when I lived in my old uh, complex on South Beach. I had this neighbor that had this cat. That it was like his buddy 
and he, you know, and he ended up moving out because he had a girlfriend, and the girlfriend didn't want the cat. She, she was like, you can't move in with me if you keep the cat. So he abandoned the cat, and the uh, cat, for years, was still coming around the complex to come back and check it out, but his owner wasn't there no more. It was like, you know, it had gone. So it's kind of like, that's how I feel about Wynwood. And I'm talking about cat, my cat shows up. Yeah. So I'm talking about Wynwood, and I kind of feel like that the same way. I was in Wynwood, it was like a magical place for a while. You know, I did a lot there, and, and like, I kind of catch myself going back all the time to kind of like, see artists or see friends check or see that no challenge check it out and it's like it's no longer there oh it's really? like we used to be like people walking around at one point it was like everywhere you went it was like you couldn't walk like a block without seeing your friends or different artists or maybe some kind of international artist painting a wall or something or, mm. or whatnot and now you know it's cool to what what it's what just, it is, what just but, but you know it's not what it was mm -hmm. which is you know, everything changes that's the only constant in life but you know it's a, it was a playground for artists at one point now it's you know it's anything else that you could have been in Miami with bars restaurant and shopping yeah. so and you're you're also at a different stage in your art career right you're not oh no yeah for sure I mean at the time when I was like you know I went through I wasn't went through many stages you know have I spent a lot of things in there but. When you know when it was kind of like in the golden years of Winwood, and after that I was running an art gallery there, and and uh, also that's when my art career also was really really like starting to take off. So it was I was really I was completely busy, and I was like over I was overwhelmed in those times too. So um, it's also yeah I'm in a different stage also because I'm, I'm traveling a lot, a lot. I'm doing I'm doing work out in other cities and having shows in other cities and other countries and stuff. So yeah, what um, how. What, how, like for little, no, for Cuba, Haiti, all these places you're gonna go, are you taking a set of paintings? What are you taking there? Where's yeah, well, the show? right now, it's like Cuba is uh, interesting because Cuba is, um, it's really a uh, cultural exchange because you really can't say have an art show there and have work say, for, sale, for sale there. What I'm doing is a cultural exchange with another artist in his art studio. So I'm gonna- Oh, he's, a, he's an artist? He's an artist in Cuba. Oh. And I'm going to go, the, the guy, the, his studio is called uh, Galeria Arte, Arte Cubano. Okay. And- uh, Havana? Yeah, and it's in Havana. Uh, I want to say a little everything, because we're in little Haiti, and like I'm always in little Havana, but- Yeah, I, yeah, no, it's actually Havana. It's actually Havana. Haiti, yeah, yeah. Cuba, we're Havana. From, <laughs> we're, going, we're going from little, Heve, hey, little Haiti to actual Havana, <laughs> and then back to little Haiti, and then to actual Haiti later. So. Yeah. <laughs> So, so no, so yeah, so uh, it's in uh, this guy's studio in Little Havana and I'm going to actually make brand new paintings because it's tricky taking stuff over there. So I'm gonna, and so they have, um, I guess, certain um, frames already set up, sizes over there. So I'm gonna make paintings accordingly to the frames and roll them up and, oh. then, and then stretch them over there. And then- So I'm, you'll have it like fully painted? Have fully painted, and then we'll have we'll we'll stretch him there, have the show there, and then with the artist that has his studio there, that is his studio, I'm going to paint a mural across the street at this local little museum, and that's kind of like you know the culture exchange, the exchange, and then he and then he eventually will come to Miami, and we'll give him a little show in my studio here. Cool. So that's how the whole cultural exchange comes in, and I'm able to do the whole project. In so with with that, just me thinking as like artist slash like business person do your paintings stay there i'll have them there for, i'll have them there for a little bit but i'm not going to cuba per se so, with the, per se with the idea that these paintings are getting sold okay you know that's not so my it's experience that's not my like teaching, it's the experience is i grew up in miami with the whole like you know going through my whole thing with the nicaragua with nicaragua what happened there dealing with cubans who went through the whole thing over there in cuba so i've kind of like you know lived a certain the miami thing you know and understand that so to be able to go to Cuba now, and I worked in a lot of art galleries that that uh, that dealt with Cuban uh, artists. Cuban art artists and this and that. So I've always had an affinity with it, and I know the island's very rich in artists and culture. So, so dope. So for me to and have the opportunity, happening? it's happening later this month. We're going later this month. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Going, and I actually got to make the paintings now because I have I've been so busy, I haven't had the time to. So I, I you know, how many are you gonna try to make? I'm gonna try to make three big ones, and when then. When you say big, what's that mean? <laughs> like this. Um, they gave me the sizes in centimeters, so I think that they were about like a hundred by a hundred centimeters. 
So that's what, roughly like 60 by like, yeah, 60 by 60 or 60 by 50. I think they were like around size. Like something maybe like this big, so maybe smaller, time. you know, something like that. So I'll have them rolled up and ready to stretch out over there. So they have like some big ones. I so said they have like six frames this size, but I'm not gonna make big six by that time. So I'll probably make like two or three this size and then try to make like some smaller ones. There. No, no, I won't, I'll make them oh, all make here. some smaller ones. I'll make some smaller ones too, because they have some smaller frames. So I'll try to make that here. And then, and then if I don't get as much done as I want, I'll take some stuff that I already have made here, some smaller things and, you know, wrap them nice. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll take them there. I'll have them hung there. I'll, um, I'll leave them there. And either I'll go back, set some other point, or have and my like re and, yeah, and wrap them and take them back, or I have a friend that that will go back and maybe he'll bring them back for me. So, or we'll, we'll do awesome. something on that lines, you know. So, cool. how did you contact each other, Cuban artists and yourself? How did that? Um, happen? I have Lots a buddy of mine, uh, Oscar Fuentes. He's a Biscayne poet that did an exchange with him over there. He did a poetry project. And uh, exchange with them over there. Told them about me. They like my work. Um, one of the, the people from from the actual space. They're here in Miami, and they're looking, you know, to do cultural exchanges here. I met with them a year ago about doing the cultural exchange with this artist here. And so, um, you know, they've already known about me. So it's just we're just making it happen now. And so, is that, is that what you're doing with Haiti also? Haiti's different. Haiti is an actual mural um, festival. And they're inviting me as an artist from the United States to go over there and paint a mural and also work with some locals and help teach some locals in Haiti um, to how to paint murals and how to get some murals done. Some artists or some? Some local artists. Oh. Yeah, oh. some local artists, how to paint murals and this, this and that. So, so yeah, so that's, that's amazing. That's exciting. Yeah, it's exciting too. I've always wanted to go to Haiti and you know, I've lived in little Haiti for years now and I was... Uh, the art teacher here in Little Haiti at Tucson Literature. After school, art teacher there for about four years, and the actual art teacher there for a year. And so um, I've worked with the Haitian community here in Miami, grew up with Haitians. So awesome. The food's awesome, they have an awesome culture, so I'm excited. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. And then, uh, what are you doing now? That's on you. So you were part of the actual community teaching at the school, mm -hmm. and then you also do different types of classes or like teaching still yeah like I'm doing um, I'm doing a couple things now uh, I'm doing graffiti classes in Winwood and here out of my studio yeah so another funny thing I would I was in Winwood the other day setting up for uh, the thrift or market yeah so and then I saw like 30 people spray painting uh -huh. and I was like what are they, what are they doing over there and yeah. it was you yeah, <laughs> yeah we're just in the same vibe that's like my paintings are energy vibration frequency so it is so um so yeah so the graffiti classes i've been doing them for maybe about four or five years now and uh you know they started when i had the gallery in in uh in winwood um we we're doing just little workshops whenever uh you know we get hit up and uh then they turned into like a regular thing you know weekly and and throughout the weeks, and we, I was put on Deco Drive this past year, and written up on the new time. Deco Drive is like amazing. Deco Drive is a show on I think on ABC, one of the local news channels here, and they you know they talk about local events and Miami related things. Oh, cool! So they they uh, did a little story about the classes, and we started I started to see a big pickup, you know, there, and so it's a lot of fun because. <laughs> You know, people come into my, there's a lot of tourists coming to Miami to go into Wynwood and a lot of people who want to learn how to, how to do graffiti, how to spray with it. And I've been doing it for a long time. I know how to use a spray can. I, you know, I, I, I've taught before, you know. How long some, is one of these sessions? It's basically about an hour, 15, hour and a half. And basically what you're doing is you're getting the, uh, you're getting the basics. My idea is to leave a person at least comfortable so with spraying, with stuff. using a spray can by the end of the class, you know? Yeah, so, using a spray can is not an easy thing to just do. It's not easy. And you gotta know some tips. Yeah, tricks. a lot of people, you'll be surprised, I've never even used a spray can before, so so they don't even know how to <laughs> handle it. And there are, you know, certain things you have to do with it and how to, you know, use it properly so you can 
you should work. Mm -hmm. I just discovered it. that there's like art spray paint cans and then like Home Depot ones. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 exactly. So there's a whole world of that now too. So it's um, it's pretty awesome. So that happened. And now I, what I also do also is uh, is we do corporate like just projects with uh, groups. Like so we did an event in Wynwood where we had these people that uh, wanted to do a mural. And so we picked the location. Um, they wanted to have a whole experience. I gave them, uh, it was like 50 people from a company that were all in town from different states or whatnot. And they want to have a Winwood experience. So I give them ponchos, I give them gloves and, cool. and booties. And we literally were painting the mural by throwing mop, with mops and buckets of paint and throwing them on a the wall, throwing rags, throwing tennis balls and squirting at them. So I love yeah, that. Yeah, so they had a lot of fun. And then I'm also doing a, a club Fire and Ice on South Beach, uh, like the drinking and, and wine painting classes. Mm -hmm. So people will be hanging out at the bar and you know, drinking, and I'll go through with them a little, just like step by step Basic. painting. Cool. Like an hour painting. You and know? they like get to keep it? Yeah, and they get to keep it. So, you know, I do those kind of for fun, you know, and just kind of, kind of get like, make sure I have some food money a little bit and have some steady cash coming in here and there, you know, so. Yeah. So those are fun things to do. Um, you know, I've been teaching for a long time now, so for me, it's like I like teaching. It's fun, and so we yeah, show people who, that. Who knows who you're influencing? Yeah, you know, and especially now nowadays, since um, art programs and schools and whatnot have been cut off, and and really like the ways public school systems are not uh, incorporating any. Yeah, they're yeah they're they're not really like pushing it. pushing or teaching kids. Um, how to how to have like how to have, use common sense or how to you know like use another side of their brain they're teaching them how to basically just answer a b c d or how to you know learn how just to memorize memorize things. you know they're good at they're, they want you to learn that's why these games come out memory simon says all these things because especially with school teaching you it's teaching you how to Read something and then memorize it and spit it out on a test. Yeah, I can't you know, memorize art. anything. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> art. And then so you have all these kids really learning memory, you know, in school. And so they're really good at memorizing, you know. But they're not, they go out in the real world and they don't know how to freaking change a toilet or freaking, you know, change their tire or, or anything. And, and art really, like, teaches you how to use, use your, your hands, hands yeah. use common sense. You know how to get things done. You know, so start really, to finish. Yeah, yeah, start to finish. Things. Yeah, so so it, 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 you learn a lot of important skills, and I've, since I've taught at schools, also you see that there's kids that just don't learn how other kids learn. They're either brains working a really way, or they're actually really gifted, and they're now labeled to be something else. And so because they don't sit down properly in class or learn the same way that other kids do, um, they're now like learning disabled or whatever whatever when really they're just they just so creative or have so much energy in them that they learn in a different way and art is something that i've seen that can really help kids or teach them skills i've seen it in kids that are either autistic or maybe have certain learning disabilities where they go to art class and they're just doing these amazing things and you could just see that these kids just their intelligence is supposed to go into somewhere else maybe they're not going to be artists Maybe the art and music and dance or something like that can teach them like a skill to maybe maybe become maybe a mechanic, or maybe become a scientist because, or maybe a surgeon or a dentist because oh, now art. because now they learn how to use their hands. You know, maybe they learn how to, how to become a, a dentist because they like mold making or something like that. Mm. Now they're making molds for teeth. You know, people don't realize that. Or maybe they become a surgeon because they got really good at using their hands at painting or drawing, and now they're able to you know do that you know as a surgeon and really really you know use your hands. So, you know, there's a lot of skills that art teaches you that people don't really realize that are handy for things, a mechanic, some kind of technician, because you're using your scissors, you're learning how to build things or tools or whatnot. So, you know, there's a lot of things art teaches you that are really important, so. And do you, are you basically on that side of your brain, like, all the time, or do you do, you do any type of, like, reading or any other Not yet. ways? Not definitely like, read, or? I definitely, like, um, you know, I have to have some sort of business oriented yeah. mind because finances, gonna, supply, just whatever. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, it does take a lot of brain power to like paint a portrait huge. Like you, you have to focus it. Yeah, I mean, people don't realize when you're on these canvases on the walls. You know, and you're on there for hours, just really using a, a, your brain is just focused. Yeah, you're, you're you're exhausted. Um, but it is a different part of your brain that you're using. But, you know, I do read a lot. I do have to, you know, do other things that 
you know, that level me out as a... When you uh, start a painting and do you visualize it roughly in your mind, like completely before you start? Are you like, I'm going to paint this dove here with like some gold or like what's kind of a, your basic process? Uh, these kind of paintings in a way, yeah, you almost have to have some methodical, some sides, some sort of things visualized out like the main concept. And then after that, I'm kind of just like picking colors, playing with colors. And then from there, I might like just kind of intuitively like, like decide as I'm, as I'm doing these layers of colors and, and patterns. Yeah, because there's a, a synergy. Yeah. There's like a pattern, a flow. That yeah, there's a certain into. sort of pattern, this and that, but there is some sort of, uh, it's not so rigid. Yeah. You know, um, my older kind of paintings when I was younger that I still might do here and there that are more surrealistic are more of just kind of just start painting and don't really think, you know, mm. it's, kind of, it's kind of a different way to approach. I mean, these, in a, in a, they're, they're different than the same because they both get you in a very meditative kind of mindset when you're doing them because when I'm doing all these dots after a while, you have to, number one, um, be very careful and breathe really slow so it's almost like a yoga when you're painting these like literally it's like a yoga you're like so you'll laser in on one i feel like you do yeah you do that like you bang them out or yeah 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 and, and literally like you, you have to like i sit there for hours and i'm on the same piece. on the same piece uh -huh. and when i'm doing the dots it becomes such a meditative like over and over repetitive thing and since i have to do them so perfectly um I have to breathe very slow and just like, you know, it is like, it's like a yoga, you know, so it's like, it's like, it's a meditation when I'm doing it. Do you listen to music? Yeah, I listen to music, you know, when I get into like a really like meditative kind of state when I'm doing them. Um, but the older, like more surrealistic ones, you know, it's, it's similar too, because you do kind of fall into another kind of state of mind, but it's more of, of a surreal, not so. That one's yours up there, all the way up there? Yeah, that's more kind of expressionistic graffiti-esque hmm. piece so yeah, i've been doing art forever and like, i'm always exploring and even now like i do a lot of different things and always changing it up i don't necessarily want to do the same things over and over i mean i know that a lot of people like find you know, something and then they just yeah they find something might go there a lot of people know me by certain things but if you really like know my work and follow my work you know that i do a lot of different things like some people might only know me for the dots. I think it's because you, know? you just make some badass stuff. So someone sees you, they see one of your badass pieces, and then it's just like, bam. But yeah, you're right. I mean, you, the, the, the piece that you said you, you used used to do a lot of, right? Like you did you produce a lot of those? those? Yeah, no, cool. I have a lot of that. I still have a lot of that. Is this what happened was? It's mostly like you bodies like humans and or what yeah is it it's, it's, it's a mix of like body parts like twisting images and within other images i mean there's there's all kinds of things it's almost like uh the way i approach it is like it's what's it called uh, a rorschach's test i guess that psychi psychiatrist put in front of people when they do those like kind of ink blots that kind of like that are like a splash it's like to see if you're crazy yeah yeah well it's not if you see, you see crazy it's kind of to see what you see in them because mm. everybody's gonna oh, get the mind going on yeah yeah because like, everybody's gonna normal. see certain things and things it's like cloud gazing or gazing at ink blots and your mind is always gonna like try to associate things you know, mm. shapes and things so you're gonna see things and things so when i do these it's kind of like i'm maybe suggestively putting things in it but i also kind of leave a certain leeway for your own mind and your own psyche to see things so it's funny because like in those paintings people will view and be like, oh, dude, it's so awesome that you put this, this, and this, this, and that in and I'm like, and I love hearing that kind of shit because I don't say, no, I didn't, or yes, I did. It's kind of like, you know, because the way I approach it is I'm doing it, I'm putting my own mind, like letting it just like kind of like let loose so that my super conscious and my own intuition kind of brings things out of like my subconscious that maybe goes into like, I don't know, maybe a place where all our minds connect, you know, or something yeah. like that. So... Um, so yeah, so it's interesting because when oh, those those other older kind of paintings are are fun when when people look at them because you always like so it's always fun to hear what people see in them 
it's just because it's always something funny or something that I would have never thought of or heard before or something new. And like like I said, I never say, oh no, I didn't, no, I didn't, you know? So kind of keep the viewers' mind flowing. Is anyone ever critical of your work? Oh yeah, always dude, for sure. You're always gonna have people critical of stuff. You know, that shit. don't understand haters out there or whatever, you know? I mean, there's always somebody who's gonna say something or somebody that doesn't understand something. Or have you always like people. responded the same way to it? Or have you had different times where you're like, oh, fuck you, or then you're like, oh, whatever. Like, do you, have you had different times? Yeah, I am not, but not to me. When I was a kid and doing graffiti, I mean, you crossed me out. You know, there's a whole other way we used to deal with that when I was a kid. <laughs> now, you know, I'm older, I don't deal with things the same way I used to. I mean, even on social media and stuff, somebody like starts making comments and stuff. I, I don't really try and, and, and you know, and, and say any negatives or even negative comments or even like respond to negative comments. But every once in a while, you know, you somebody gets you in a way where you you feel like you know you gotta respond and say something. <laughs> It's like, dude, really? You know, so. Yeah. You could be like an 11 year old kid. You yeah. you fucking suck, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, wah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, usually, you know, you're always gonna have somebody that says something. And sometimes it's better just like having them out there barking and saying the negative Yeah, thing plus when you, I mean, you're just hustling and working. I mean, you're just hustling and working. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I'm doing my best to. Um, put stuff out there with positive energy and cool and with you know with light and, and try to you know at least put happiness in people's faces when they definitely it, so. I think it art you know touches people it can change the way you're feeling and stuff and your art is dope it does that yeah you know one thing is I do my best to be conscious about what I'm putting out there I mean you know we're in the past not in the past but my other work was just kind of like raw rugged like a lot of sexuality and just like hardcore emotions and stuff, which was still cool you know but you know especially when you're putting stuff out there on the streets for people to see like you know it's you got to realize that art's a powerful thing and you know the message cool. you're sending out there is really important and people really especially kids they really i mean your brain take is it all a in sponge you know yeah. people don't re realize how much your mind is a sponge and really absorbs everything and anything I mean, just look at TV and how much brainwashed society is with just anything, just politics. Some is just in anything, it's just ridiculous. So, I mean, you have people that live in some little rural town in America that thinks they're gangster because they're watching, you know, too many rap videos. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, so it's like, that's how much, you know. People you are influenced. Yeah, you can influence somebody. So if you're putting stuff out there, you know, that's, you know, whatever, you really got to think about what you're putting out there, so. Nice, so you do respect, in some sense, like, the viewers, like, per not perception, but, like, what it might do to the, like, the people seeing it. Yeah, no, for sure. You got to be conscious about that, you know, you know geez. I mean, some artists' intent might be to cause a disruption, hmm. and to me, want to, like, kind of, like, Send a message. Send a message or kind of shock people, you know, whatever. Um, I mean, I'm not necessarily trying to shock or cause a disruption or nice. that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, and it sounds like you have have a pretty full uh, months ahead of you in terms of travel and work. What, what kind of goals do you have for yourself in, in the more long term? like? two to five years like do you do you have anything you're trying to do with your art yeah i mean i want to i mean i would definitely travel more and have um that's awesome and have more murals in other countries that consistently keep on doing that like because maybe every every few months have a mural in another city or country i'm going to um definitely i haven't been to europe yet so that's mm. something i want to do I mean, for whatever reason just do you enjoy art. going to galleries too or like seeing like old paintings or yeah, old of artists course. yeah yeah I mean that's what I grew up loving I mean I have ah, yeah. I mean like I love art so I didn't get to do the gallery thing as much as I used to especially just because now in Miami they've really dispersed and and um, there's a lot around but I just don't kind of kind of like you know since Winwood kind of blew up and broke up um, I, like a lot of the galleries are still trying to settle and figure out where they are so there's not really like a neighborhood or a lot of galleries or any like gallery walk set area yet. I mean, Little Haiti starting to pop up in Little Havana, but 
When I was younger, I used to go to galleries weekly. I used to like, on any of my spare time, just go and study work from all the kind of masters and mm. artists and, and whatever, I was always doing that. So, um, and I'm pretty busy and, and don't have time for a lot of stuff, but I mean, when I do go out and do do something, it's at a gallery event or whatever. So I'm gonna go to an event tonight, which I have a piece set in. So, yeah, I'm gonna come check it out. Yeah, it's gonna be a double little event. It's 1317, they're closing, they're leaving to another part of town, and they're having a, a show with a lot of artists that have done stuff in Linwood and you know, and really you know, are, are doing things in Miami, so it's pretty cool. So, do you have any uh, mentors or like influences that are specific, or is it just kind of from everywhere um i mean i've i've yeah i've definitely had a lot i've had a lot of mentors and artists and people that have you know stood out and big big influences in my life from my high school art teacher mr eisenberg to uh my sister's uh ex-husband rick diaz granados uh to ed love who was a professor and uh the dean of you know school at fsu uh, awesome so yeah there's definitely some people out there that I've been big influences and people that I've, you know, that show me what it was like to be a professional artist and, and how to get things done. Nice. And if uh, someone listening would like to do like a, a little group, like spray painting or something, how, how does that work? They just contact you directly? Yeah, just contact me up? and just, you know, and I'm really flexible. Um, we could do it in my studio, we could do it in Wynwood. If you have a place to do it, I'll go to you, you know. Cool. So, so if there's like, if they have like their own business or their own wall or something. Their own wall, I do it on, I do it on small individual boards, large boards for groups. If we have a wall, we do it on a wall, on a big wall, you know. So. And if someone, uh, where's the place that you were talking about, does the, the food, beer and wine and art, where's that? Uh, we do that at, at a Club Fire and Ice on South Beach. Club fire, um, right? Yeah, it's okay. pretty cool. It's an ice bar, so they actually have a, a real ice bar in there where you mm. go inside and everything. They give you a fur coat and you're drinking out of... Uh, what? Yeah, they give you a fur coat. Here? They yeah, have yeah, that yeah, here? Yeah, you're drinking out of glasses. I'm going to come do that. Yeah, 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 you're drinking what? out of glasses that are ice. You're, the bar is made out of ice. You're sitting on, on a bench. I wanted bench, to bench ask ice. what's the ice bar, but I didn't want to sound like an idiot. Yeah, yeah, no, it's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, they commissioned me to do a mural inside and also have a mural in the back of there. So wow. I do, I do, uh, they hit me up for, for classes, for the drinking and wine classes, you know. I really do it for fun, you know. Cool. And, and, and Is it like a set time each week? Um, no, they, it's whenever they, 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 have hit, it, they hit me up. It. They hit me up, they call me up, they tell me, hey, are you available to do mm -hmm. it and so and so dates. You know, they put them on their their website. I think they might put them on Eventbrite or something. And then you know, then, like okay. yeah. And then they they you know, and then I just show up. They have everything there for me: the paints, the easels, everything. And I just kind of come up with a with a little concept each class to show people what to do. And people have fun, and they go home with a little painting. And most of them have never painted before, so it's fun. Yeah, it's, that's a it's definitely a fun like experience. Yeah, do something different. It's definitely fun, you know. It's like I have the opportunity and blessed to be able to do this, so to be able to show other people is pretty pretty cool. And you mentioned that you've been in here for about a, like a year and a half. Um, yeah, for about a year and a half. Is yeah. this like this is a pretty cool workspace? Is this one? Of you, is this like the you love it? Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's been a long time coming. I haven't had a proper studio for many years, mm -hmm. and this has kind of been like a dream to have my live work studio, you know. And, it took a long time to be able to find the space and to find something that I was gonna, that fit for all my needs, for the size, and that I was gonna be able to live in and, and be in a neighborhood. So do you feel like in. super in a good place in terms of like working? Like, do you feel like you're focused and like... Yeah, focused? yeah, I'm super focused. Uh, you know, I have a lot of stuff going on. I just really need a clone. If I had another me and another two me's that, you know, that to get more done, things done and get other things done and need done, like computer work, like even just consistently looking for more gigs and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and just, there's just organizing, cataloging and stuff that are I've done. Are you trying to and, actually clone yourself or are you trying to find someone <laughs> to like? Yeah, no, no, I like, I, I need an apprentice, you know, like some, somebody that wants since, to learn. And, uh, yeah, since this is an art podcast and how, what, how does an apprentice gain work in the art world you know like what I mean is, when I had the, when I had the gallery I had interns and, I, and it was people that just really wanted to learn how to okay because I have, I have a lot of 
knowledge and skills we are going to give people. Since I ran an art gallery, and, you know, there are artists, I know how to you know, stretch my canvases, I know how to adjust my stuff, I know how to make murals on the wall, and you know, I know how to, you know. So these interns, they, they just, they like log these hours to show that they worked X, Y, Z. Yeah, right. they learned a lot, and they learned a lot, um, especially when we were at the art gallery in Wynwood. It was a time when people just wanted to be involved, you know, mm. because there was artists all around. It was an exciting time. So the art and world is very open to interns. The yeah. concept of like, hey, you're helping me intern, learn. Intern, apprentice. Um, so that's the same as apprentice. There's no difference. Intern, no, an intern's different because an intern can be somebody that that is doing all kinds of stuff. That's learning. That maybe is mm. is you know in maybe doing it also for school credits. Okay. You know, one time and in, in, in an apprentice would probably would be more somebody that that, Does wants, something. that wants to be an artist, mm. that wants to learn, you know, how to paint, that wants to learn how to do murals. So it's gonna go with me and it's gonna help me out on the murals, but it's also gonna learn technique and how to get things done. Mm. You know, an intern might be somebody that I'm gonna teach how to um, do like, uh, you know, how to, an intern for say how to how to handle art, how to install art, how to um, catalog it, how to uh, you know do proper social media, how to make sure you have all the proper documentation for the work, like wow. all that kind of stuff, all like the ins and outs of the art world business and all that kind of stuff. Um, so and in terms of a uh, like an intern, uh, yeah, like an intern like that, what kind of like availability or how does it work in terms of like scheduling or timing like how do you do that how do you set that up with that um really somebody can get a lot done and learn a lot a few times out of the week you know giving like maybe like four hours you know five hours oh, so it's pretty you know, simple so it's not pretty like simple you don't want to you know over do, over kill do them. It, <laughs> kill them. and you know when i had interns or or uh I mean, pan apprentice, you know, and when the job has the budget for it, you know, you're definitely breaking them off, you know, so cool. you appreciate it, you're helping, you're showing them, you're teaching them, you know. And, yeah, it's definitely uh, so. a, like a win-win for both parties. No, yeah, for sure, yeah. because as an artist that has, Helps. that has gone through school and understands and, you know, and done, done the legwork and all that stuff and put my work in also, um, you realize that the real learning and the most learning you do and you get is by actually working and putting in the work and being out there and doing it. So to get the opportunity to be with an artist and be there working with them and seeing yeah. what they're doing and helping out, that's really like, there's no, there's no price. There's no substitute. Yeah, there's no substitute for that. Because you can go to school, you can do all that stuff. And, if, and it's up to you. It depends really on what you want to get out of it in school. But they're not, nobody's going to, just because you go to school, because a lot of people think that, oh, this artist went to school. <laughs> not. They're like, oh, I'm a self-taught artist. Everybody's a self-taught artist because you're really just getting out of school. You want to get out of it. So you, you're getting out of school with the amount of time that you put in your studio, the amount of time that you put in that class, the amount of time that you put in that so it's the workshop. All phase. qualified as self-taught because yeah. you have to learn it. Yeah, to learn it. You know, I mean, you might you might be lucky enough to get a painting instructor or some sort of drawing instructor that did that did go out of their way to teach you some sort of technique. Maybe you had that dude that was. I had one guy that, that you know that because I went out of my way to really want to find out how to do skin tone, you know. And he told me because I asked him. So but really, in art school, this kind of like skin. Like yeah, you know, in school like, you might you might you might take some classes where they might teach you how to model, but really. You learn how to model by modeling, by doing it, mm -hmm. by painting, by actually making it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nobody, you're not learning how to model because you're sitting there watching somebody model. Yeah. You can kind of like get an idea how to get it done, but you're, getting, you're learning how to do it by doing it. So the whole idea that somebody went to school and is, you know, or somebody self-taught, it's like, you know, it's really, you're getting out of it what you're doing. So if you're not going to school, but you're going out there and you're putting in work every day, school. and you're going to, to show, you're going out to the galleries and you're looking at work and you're studying and you're going out there and learning from other artists and helping out other artists and doing it, that's more valuable than going and getting the degree anywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's all about how much work you put into anything. You know, it's like, it's just, just like, you know, physics tells you is energy is, 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 
it's karma, it's energy, it's what you get is what you give. So if you put the energy in it, you're gonna get back. So you put work in no it, you're short gonna get back. Yeah, there's no shortcuts in it. Yeah, there's, there's no people, fluff and puff. There's people that try to make shortcuts, that try to that try to make a hype around it, that try to shortcut and and just make noise and that, but it just ends up being noise and, and it's hype and people end up finding that out, you know, and then you you know, you just, it's like having a a beautiful box given to you with this amazing griff wrap and everything and then there's nothing in it. You know what I'm saying? You made you made a big presence, you made a lot of noise, but at the end of the day when people open it up they realize oh, there was nothing in it. You know, and, and just like anything else in the art world of an art, you people only care about you since your last painting and what you're doing now mm. or whatever. You gotta keep on doing things, you have to be consistent, you gotta keep on evolving. You know, if not you're just gonna be left behind and 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 if you think that, you know, that because you did this one big thing or this one big project and you made a lot of noise and that's all it takes, it's not, you know, there's, you got to keep on doing this because there's so similar many. Similar to sports. Similar to anything. Yeah. There's yeah, so yeah. many people are amazing. There's so many gifted, talented people in the world. There's seven plus billion people out there. And <laughs> we're all created equal as far as I'm concerned. And we all have the ability to do something awesome. So it's all, it's so if you really think like that, I mean, there's so many amazing artists out there, you know, so you got to keep on doing it because there's always going to be a younger person. There's always going to be another one more hungry than you that hasn't had the opportunity that wants it. And if not, if you're not doing it and keep on being consistent, you're just going to be left behind and you're going to be forgotten about, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why, like, well, Matisse and Picasso, they lived old and they producing old and yeah. so raw like yeah and Matisse Picasso, was like cutting paper no I don't even know I have to check that but some super famous artist yeah. he just he couldn't paint anymore with brushes and that so he made like badass paper you know displays mm -hmm. yeah yeah cool. because you got Picasso Thinking he's Picasso and I'm the G of the world, and you got <laughs> and you got some guy like Dali looking at him like, "Yo, what's up, dude? I'm a badass motherfucker. Watch out, you know?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know, that's how it is. And the, and the art world is so many talented people. It's you know? cool. It's and, cool. Yeah, and then that's only the people that you know about. You know, there's so many people out there with so much talent that you never even hear about. And that's the awesome thing about these little screens we carry around with us all the time. Yeah, it's a way that. You can see some artwork from China digitally or like someone far away can watch this podcast. It's a cool way that artists can communicate. Oh, no, for sure. And it's helped out. It's helped, you know, like kind of change it a lot for the artists in general. It's kind of revolutionized, I think, the world for artists. It's kind of like a, another, very, it's like an upgrade. It's like a jump up in internet speed from dial up. You know, oh, yeah. Like, no, it's, it's, a, it's a huge upgrade because... Because even, I mean, shit, man. I remember when I used to work for an art gallery and we wanted to send a client a painting. I mean, I had to sit there and get the camera, take a picture, develop the film, then scan the picture in a scanner, upload it on the computer when the internet was very slow back then, then email yeah. it, which could take forever too back then. And that could have taken like four days, five days <laughs> for the whole process. Now you're just like taking a picture and sending uploaded instantly, you know, or sending this like, you know, changes everything. You know, now you can put your stuff on Instagram or Facebook and have somebody on the other side of the world see it. Now and you this, can put, yeah. This VR stuff you're doing. Um, yeah, the AR, the augmented reality, yeah. Oh, AR, yeah. I'll take a little video of it. We'll do it again on your phone and I'll video record it and I'll, I'll put it in this. Uh, so you have your logo, right? Your logo mm -hmm. that you you use for your branding and then if you hold up the phone because it becomes alive yeah no basically what it is is i worked with these these guys approached me um last year uh they wanted to work with a local artist they were starting a company uh making augmented reality and um uh, and they i guess had seen my work and felt that i was somebody that they wanted to work with on some projects and they wanted to launch a company so they hit me up um and they showed me what they can do with augmented reality. And, you know, I'm somebody that's worked in new media and I've worked in video, you know, and whatnot. And so I'm open to all kinds of different stuff from my artwork. 
And so, as soon as they showed me what they could do with augmented reality, you know, the first thing that hit my mind was, oh man, this is awesome, I want this for sure. On my work trip, and I was like, the first thing I thought was, was my character. Because mm. uh, they showed it to me first on a business card. And my business card already had my logo on it with my, with my little shaman head logo, um, which I kind of use as my branding. And I've been wanting to make my character into a 3D animation for a while now. And so it kind of like a light bulb hit up in my head and I was like, how about I kill two birds with one stone and get this augmented reality done and help me with my branding and for promotional purposes. But now I can also get this character as a 3D animation. So, so AR is taking the 3D animation and then making it so that you can interact with it. Yeah, so then my character, they, I worked with them as the, the animators as far as how I wanted the character to look 3D wise, because I've made this character, I've been developing for many years, okay. but I've never made him 3D. So, oh, so you, you, you've like conceptualized him, like the color, like what I saw, you've had for a while. I've had for a long time. Okay, you just you know? made it 3D. And then, then we need to okay. make it 3D now, which is a whole other thing, because really in 2D, my character doesn't make that much sense in 3D with some of the things it is. Oh. Um, so we had to figure out a way to visualize it in 3D. Um, Did it because, change? Because really in 2D, I'm giving you an image with that's showing you, that kind of like how Picasso, Cubism, showing you some things that are on the, that's supposed to be on the side, mm -hmm. on the front. That's kind of what I'm doing with my, with my image too. So now I'm actually making a 3D model of it. So we had to conceptualize how to do that. So I had to work with them and be like, all right, so now it's got to form like this. The teeth have to be like this. The hands have to be like this. It's very specifically, I want it to look like this. And then they actually worked it out on their program. We had to go through a few revisions. I told them what I wanted it to do um, animation wise. And then I came up with the sound. After they gave me the animation, I went into my editing software and then kind of just like made up the sounds, spliced up a few things that I had and whatever. And then they put it together. And then eventually that concept is going to my artwork and my murals. So that's what I'm working on. It's just I just haven't had the proper funding for it because it does cost money to get it done. And, and I've been, you know, it, it, it is uh, something that you have to invest in to get done. But yeah. so that was for the first, for the first idea was to use it for my promotional purposes because now I can also use it for uh, my t-shirts, my hats, anything uh, has has AR on it. And it's only the beginning of it. It's only the too. beginning so of it now too. Planting you know? those seeds is good because you'll be so adapt. Yeah, and it's just like, it's just the world. I mean, everybody has a phone now, you know? And to be able now to have artwork and interact, and with, interact with it, do different things because and now- just look at it, what's it called? Go, Pokemon Go, or whatever. Exactly, so it's kind of similar. Like my, my character is like my Pokemon. Yeah. So, and now you can- I need to make my, mine, I don't know. Yeah, so if you have like a t-shirt of mine on or eventually I want to make hats, you can like literally have the app open, go in selfie mode, have the character come out on your hat, do whatever you want with it, take a picture with it, share it on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. And have so, like different ones or yeah, different yeah, yeah. So date, like Snapchat filters. Yeah, because it's gonna update. It's gonna yeah. update, change, do different things. Right now he's a still guy with animation around him. Eventually maybe he's animated and does things. I'm gonna bring one thing too, because yeah, this yeah. is cool. Cool. Yeah, this is a dope, dope episode. Yeah, and I'll hold that in front of the camera too. Yeah, so then because of the whole comp, because of that, I worked on the AR with these oh. guys, and they made my 3D guy. Oh, you got a 3D guy? A so 3D now this is... Cool. Yeah. So now this what is... What material is that? The 3D printing Yeah, the 3D material? printing stuff, but it could be various materials, but this is it's how you say... Super gentle? This is a, uh, a prototype. So that's the first Shamancito ever printed in 3D. So this still needs to be developed. I still need to work out like some of the 3D elements of it, like in the future. Like, but my idea is that I eventually want to. Um, I'll show you this. Cool. 3D printing. Wow. Just like Kid Robot has their money and dunny dolls. Oh, how do you do that? This is you just this is just a dunny doll that I painted. You know, but this is basically my character. Painted on a dunny, I want to make my character as a doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you see, that's the idea. So that's kind of in the works now. This is the the prototype. This is like Mickey Mouse in black and white. 
yeah. So yeah, it, you know. Are you focusing on that, or is it kind There's, of just a back burner project? I have a lot of things that go yeah. going on. You know, I got a lot of projects on, so that's why I need to clone myself because I need a clone to focus on this. I need a clone to focus on the clothes. Of course. You know, I need and I need me to actually produce work. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's yeah. that's one of the things, you know, that it's it's a, there's a lot of stuff and there's only so much time. And there's only I'm only one person, you know, and I gotta produce. I gotta I gotta sell the work. You I seem gotta, like you're pretty efficient though, and like like you got a good grasp on it. Like you maximize what you do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know if I say I can maximize what I do because I think because I'm only one person, I kind of have some holes that there are things that slide through, but I try and do my best to maximize what I can get out of things. But so would having like apprentices really help what you want to do? Oh yeah, big time. So is there a reason like maybe you haven't like found one recently or you I think I've been really one? busy and haven't focused on it or found the right person. Because I do want to find... And how does an artist go about finding them? Do they go to local art schools or... I've actually had a couple of people hit me up when I've been out and say that if I ever need any help on murals and this and that, that they'd uh, be willing to. Um, and I've had a couple of people that have helped me out and have and a couple that have helped me out uh, on a few different ones. But, but as somebody I haven't found that is like committed is committed like, is an artist that's striving that wants to be an artist that wants to learn that wants to really this is what they want to do who's like patient in the learning yeah. process and like, wants to learn a lot of different things you know that wants to learn mm, because some might want to just like specialize in certain things yeah yeah and somebody that you know that really you know deserves to learn that has talent too that can really go somewhere with it you know because um, um, like I said if I know knowledge to Get back and there's no reason to hold it all here because you know, I've learned a lot of things doing all this. So. Oh, and then another thing we can do uh, again one of these days is I want to, with the podcast, I really want to attach like a mini tutorial because on YouTube, you know, people look up things all day. So mm -hmm. like say you, you just stretched a canvas or you're mixing certain outdoor paint just like stupid little small things mm -hmm. making a tutorial so with each artist that i do the podcast with i want to make a little like five step just like basic tutorial with that artist with mm -hmm. this topic mm -hmm. so we can do that another day that'd be pretty yeah. cool mm -hmm. yeah because those are fun like right. this podcast is like long and people will listen to it yeah, 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 yeah for sure but it'd be also cool to have a little like five snippet tutorial of you like this is step one, this is step two, step three, step four, step five, boom. Yeah, I get cool. it. Since I edited it, I know people have a short attention span, especially when it comes to video. Yeah, and that's so cool, and the thing about podcasts is it's so up and coming. Uh, I heard somewhere that there's only 500,000 podcasts, oh, yeah? and that there's over like, I don't even know the number I'll throw out there, there's something like billions of like YouTube channels, like something ridiculous, right? Where it's not like a podcast pl platform, so it's very infantile like and people like listening to podcasts i think so too because for me it's like um like i was saying i don't listen i don't watch tv i don't really listen to popular radio or i try not to you know like get sucked into facebook and all these like yeah. you know fake advertisements and things and stories going around mm -hmm. time because there's just a lot of garbage out there and and the media and the news out there is, is it's really you're really how you say um not really shown all out there all out there and all kinds of um a, every, a, you're not shown a wide range of views of things you're really isolated where you're being shown and so i think podcasts and things like social media and things like that allow for real freedom and for real expression for people to do like what you're doing you're a personal person you're just you're one person that's doing something like, you know, you're on your own vibe, your own thing, with your own ideas, with your own. I can smoke on camera. You smoke on camera, do whatever <laughs> the fuck you want. You you don't have some big corporate head that owns all these other outlets that's telling you this is what we're showing on the news today, or this is the what propaganda we're spitting out to the people yeah. today, or because we have this so and so agenda, or this is the politician that we're pushing, you know, that we're backing up, so all our stories are going to be good about this guy and bad about this guy. You know, it's like, we don't realize that this world's about money and this world's all about about making money and about ratings or about having people's agenda and, and that's all you're gonna see out there in T 
TV, in radio, in music, in what, what we're out there. So you're not going to get real expression. You're not going to get real people, things out there. That's and why. raw content, no. like raw, original content from like artists, singers, like those really good, like raw, no, nothing overseeing it. That's going to be like valuable content. Of you know? course. People leech on to that. Like, of course. The Joe true. Rogan podcast. You, have, you know Joe yeah, Rogan? Yeah, of course. Joe Rogan's have you awesome. heard his podcast? Yeah, I've heard his podcast. Oh, I listen, I listen so to dope. him on YouTube. He's super intelligent. He's into all kinds of yeah. stuff. From jujitsu <laughs> to smoking weed to aliens. <laughs> to DMT to, to whatever. DMT, he's fucking mad. Politics. He's and just, me, yeah. like I was saying, because I don't watch TV. I don't do all these things. Listening, so I'll be listening yeah. to these kind, of, these kind of things. Or just have YouTube or whatever, these kind of things. Because that's where you're listening to the real interesting content. Yeah. That's where you're learning about real shit. That's where you're getting real knowledge. Not some bullshit, made up thing that's being fed to your mind. Or being fed some just mindless garbage of senseless music or senseless whatever. I mean, that's yeah, basically totally. what media has become. It's just become noise. TV's become noise. Music's become noise. That's why. Is this... If you haven't checked out YouTube TV yet, it's dope. It's different than YouTube Red. Have you heard of either one? No, no. Okay, so YouTube, like if you just have a Gmail account and you have a YouTube account, well, they go together, and you play music, it'll, it'll have ads, right? It, and so you have restrictions like that. You can't turn off your phone. YouTube will also turn off. So YouTube Red, it was, they like basically copied like Apple Music. So if you pay Apple like, ten dollars a month or something you can basically stream all these songs ad free so YouTube created YouTube Red, dopest thing in the world you pay ten dollars a month and you can uh, no ads obviously but you can turn off your phone and still be listening to like YouTube podcasts or music so for only ten dollars a month you have full access to YouTube but they now just shit on every like cable company whatever because they created YouTube TV, like they got it passed legally or whatever. It's $40 a month, right? And you get all of like cable TV, so any type of sporting or any type of Spanish channels, whatever the fuck on TV that you have on Comcast, mm -hmm. you can now have it on your smartphone and have DVR and have up to six people use it and it's $40 a month. It's nuts, it's yeah, gonna it's just awesome. revolutionize all of it it's it's wild yeah it's amazing it's amazing what's happened in a short amount of time with all of this technology and phones and stuff. i mean just from when i was working i used to work in selling cell phones when it just first became affordable and for the masses and even from them to now what we have is it's, it's mind-boggling yeah, yeah it's crazy some alien shit yeah, 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 yeah for sure but yeah cool i mean we we talked imagine an hour and 15 minutes mm -hmm. it was cool uh learned a lot about you you're bringing a lot of value to the community. You're doing good things with your artwork. You're a very uh, professional individual. And uh, yeah, best of luck to you. I'm sure we'll do a few more episodes here coming up. I'd love to, you know, shoot some more live videos of you, but like come on a day where you're really working, mm -hmm. like painting, painting. Yeah. And we can do some more drone shots. Maybe uh, also when you have a class, I could do a little like vlog about the class. Okay. You could use it for like marketing material. Like I said, my editing skills aren't amazing, but if I could just yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah? yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. And so yeah, with that being said, uh, thanks for everyone who listened to the end of the podcast. Uh, you're probably at far and few in between for now. Uh, this was the ninth episode. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, uh, any feedback, and also. If you yourself or anyone listening knows any artists or like gallery owners or anyone who would be up for something like this, you, you know, let us know and we'll we'll travel to them and do the, the pop up setup. Mm -hmm. And yeah, with that being said, thanks again and, and have a good weekend. What a wonderful